Hi everybody, this is Bastian and uh, today we're going to take a look at the Cole Poltanowski system. So the Cole Poltanowski is a great attacking system for the beginning player. It's not seen much in a uh, GM play because of uh, the playing style is a bit drawish if uh, Black knows all the correct counter moves. However, in uh, Submaster play and even Master play, it's um, an excellent attacking choice and well worth looking into. Especially because uh, a lot of the attacking ideas uh, we see in other systems as well. And even if Black is an anti cold uh, player, we can still switch to other systems like um, the Queen's Gambit, for instance, in mid game, if you were to choose so. Uh, so this play, game is played against uh, Damas, which is a 1500 plus chess engine. And we can see that with a few inaccuracies from um, Black. The Cole Poltanowski actually becomes the best attacking choice. So play starts with d4, f6, knight f3, pawn to e6, and e3. You notice that um, uh, immediate e4 or e5 cannot be played because of uh, the knights covering those squares. Bishop to e7, which is a passive uh, development. Typically, um, black plays pawn to d5, and then bishop to d6 in order to force a pawn advance with the protection of the bishop. But bishop e7 is sometimes seen as well, which is not bad, but a little bit more um, passive um, for black. And we can see that this is one of his first two inaccuracies uh, that allow the full strength of the call system. Bishop d3. So the reason why bishop d3 is played is uh, to strengthen uh, e4. d5. So we're seeing somewhat uh, similar setup for uh, both players. Also castle. Now at this point, White can still choose to play pawn to c4, which is the Queen's Gambit. Knight b to d2. Still we can choose to play c4 if so needed. And now typically Black plays c5. And the reason why c5 is played is because that both Black and White want to play uh, center advance and c5 by black prevents white from doing so so it look like looks like we have uh, two uh, pieces protecting the advance but actually it isn't so because if white were to play e4 now then black can simply play c4 to kick back the bishop bishop e2 and then simply pawn takes pawn and um, now we don't have the protection of the bishop anymore white is down a pawn and at this point instead of playing e4 white has to cho choose from uh, two systems which is uh, b3 the Kolzukertard system which prevents c4 advance so it's c4 take 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 black is down a pawn alternatively we have a call called Tanowski which is a c3 so if now c4 is played white can simply fall back and still protect the pawn advance and in some cases after an exchange this pawn becomes weak so those are the two main all systems. However, Black now plays his second inaccuracy instead. He plays knight to c6. And when we take a look at the position, knight to c6 covers e e5. So pawn to e5 is possible, but it does block uh, the c7 pawn. Also, because of Black's first inaccuracy, which is bishop on e7. There's no control for um, 
uh, of the bishop on e5 in order to help an e5 advance from black. So at this point, c3 to Koltanowski is the best choice. It prevents the knight jump to kick back the bishop, which will fall back on b1. It blocks the bishop on c6, so um, black can no longer advance his uh, c pawn. And there's no danger for uh, black to continue with the pawn advance because uh, e5 isn't strong enough. So if um, black were to advance, simply pawn takes pawn is good enough, and black will have lost the pawn. So now we're seeing the Koltanowski in a, a strong version because black, although he, he doesn't uh, appear to have done anything wrong, has played a slightly inaccurate move order. Bishop to d7, where else? Queen e2. The Queen e2 may or may not be played in the Koltanowski version. It wastes a move, but it uh, further strengthens e4. Also, we have tactics uh, queen e4 with mate. We'll go to that later. Bishop d6. Finally, black decides to play d6 in order to uh, push the pawn. And e4. Of course, now I'm threatening a fork. So, black needs to either uh, capture the pawn or move one of his minor pieces. But if uh, pawn takes, you get queen, uh, bishop, uh, knight takes pawn, knight takes, queen takes, and now we're seeing mate threats on uh, h7. So black doesn't recapture the pawn and plays knight to h5 instead. So I can no longer um, fork any pieces. Also, Black has an idea to uh, start a counterattack with knight to f4, and this will fork both the bishop and the queen. So, for instance, if uh, e5 now, knight f4, queen e3, knight takes, queen takes, bishop retreats, and white is definitely not worse, but he has lost his attacking idea. I must find a new way to continue the attack. And why allow this? So after knight h5, there are two ways to counter um, knight with four threats. That's either to move this knight so the bishop can cover the square, or simply play g3 also possible. G3 was played. Bishop E7. This allows for the knight to fall back on F6 because otherwise it can be forked. Rook to E1. So the idea with rook to e1 is to even further strengthen the e-push. Also it allows free maneuvering of uh, the d2 knight to f1 and then perhaps e3, g3 or uh, h2. Now of course um, there's no danger for um, black to recapture, so we can keep the pressure on, because if uh, pawn takes pawn, queen takes, and we have uh, we still have mate threats. So in a call system, you always want to remove the defender, the knight, on f6, to any other square, or exchange with the bishop, doesn't matter, because this is a very strong defender, 
It prevents the H7 mate threats or phone captures. 